Hello, my name is Arvid Alast, and I'm presenting work uh, done together with Elena Vallas, Margit Langemetz, and Christina Hoffel about uh, multi word expressions in the Kilex data model. Uh, first, uh, let's discuss what is a multi word expression for the purposes of this paper. Uh, we are only concerned with uh, data model design, uh, which means that uh, we uh, define multi-word expressions only based on what's useful for the data model design rather than uh, uh, stemming from some uh, linguistic theory about multi-word expressions. And here's a, a list uh, of the types uh, of uh, expressions that we, we consider in this paper. Uh, some of these are normally not considered uh, multi-word expressions like uh, compounds, for instance, and this, uh, their inclusion here is motivated mainly by uh, how productive it is in Estonian to form uh, compound words. Uh, it's, it's almost as easy as uh, creating new phrases in English. Uh, you simply put, put words together. And uh, why we include them here is that they consist of other words that are also included in the same dictionary, uh, which means that they, uh, the unit, the, the whole uh, multi-word unit or compound unit could be included uh, as a whole or as its components. And, and that's the problem that we're trying to solve here. Uh, a multi-word expression can be its own head words. It can be given as part of another head words article uh, as a collocation, as an, as an example, as a compound, whatever. It could be that uh, the multi-word unit is easy to classify. Uh, a compound is always a compound, but uh, for, uh, for a collocation, for instance, it's uh, more difficult to decide whether it is a collocation or a, or a phrase or, or whatever. Uh, it uh, can also belong to several types of uh, multi-word expressions at the same time, and it can also move between the categories as the language develops. Uh, something that was very rare only a short while ago, um, and, and therefore not included as its own uh, article in the dictionary, could have become uh, more frequent recently, so that now it warrants its own uh, article. There can be consensus uh, among linguists how to classify this particular uh, multi-word expression, or there could be no consensus, it could be debatable, it could be theory dependent. And now we are only concerned with, we're not trying to solve those debates, we're not uh, trying to get linguists to agree, we are only trying to uh, create structures in the dictionary writing system where all of those uh, variants, all of those uh, points of view can be expressed uh, conveniently. An example, uh, the Estonian for red wine is Puranavein. It is uh, its own, it does have its own uh, article in the genera general dictionary. Uh, we currently don't have a wine dictionary, but if we did, it uh, would probably be uh, Ahead word there as well. Uh, only recently it was a collocation for vein um, and it was removed from there uh, for this very reason that it was already a head word, so it didn't make sense to have it in both places. It could also be a usage example for one of the senses of unane or red, um, uh, the, the dark red kind. And it could also be uh, a definition for a type of wine, uh, Bordeaux, for instance, uh, uh, if the lexicographer decides not to give a, a full definition or a proper definition for this type of wine, only wanting to uh, narrow the options of the reader uh, by saying that it, it's a type of uh, red wine. And, and this is usually, at least in Estonian dictionaries, it is, uh, normally written simply as uh, which is not clear uh, up to the end, but uh, it is useful for the 
user, the reader, and therefore it's a commonly used pattern of definition. And that's also why we have used, why we have included definitions uh, as multi-word uh, expressions. Uh, this is uh, even more strange, I would say, um, from the point of view of, uh, of normal multi-word expression theories and our other categories. But, but this is uh, this uh, practical uh, pattern in use in the standard lexicography is then the justification for that. Uh, what dictionary data models used to look like, uh, including ours uh, from ELEX, uh, which was developed uh, by 20 to 10 years ago. Each headword had a sense, and sense had all kinds of multi-word expressions. I'm omitting all those other data elements here for clarity. They uh, were specialized. Uh, each multi-word expression type had its own specialized data structure. Uh, also, this data structure could be repeated in multiple places. For instance, if there were subsenses, then these could also have their own. Uh, multi-word expressions, and also in some cases, the multi-word expressions could be attached to the headword, not the sense. So this overall made the uh, data model uh, fairly complex. Only the, the, the description of, of a normal dictionary data model was uh, several pages long. This had the benefit of uh, each multi-word expression type having its own specialized data structure. It, it was tailored to this particular type. And the drawback that all those specialized structures were still uh, quite similar. So that there was, uh, it could also be described as uh, repetition. So what we have done uh, is we have take, taken some of these uh, uh, multi-word expressions and lifted them into headword status. So we have removed them from, uh, from the article of the component and put them as their own uh, headword, giving also the type of the headword then. If the headword is a frazim, then we list uh, the, the type as frazim. Or if, if it's a, a compound, then we say that it's a compound. And uh, there are then, uh, uh, relations between the components or, or the base of the der derivation uh, and the results. Still, uh, as you see, uh, there remain some multi-word expressions and uh, we have left them uh, as their own data structures so far on purpose. So we, we have made the con conscious decision that collocations and usage ex examples are so basically different from headwords that they uh, merit their own uh, uh, data structures. They, they can't be uh, equal to headwords. But we have started to have doubts about that. Uh, so collocation and usage example are the ones that we are having doubts about currently. And for precisely the same reason as mentioned before, that uh, the same unit can simultaneously be a collocation and a headword, or at least there can be a debate uh, whether it is one or the other, or it can become, it can be one and then become the other uh, as the language de uh, develops. So we are currently in the process of uh, redesigning the uh, data model. Uh, for additional simplification uh, so that we remove the specialized data structures for collocation and usage example. And we uh, put them also as uh, normal headwords uh, and simply the list of types of a headword will grow longer and probably the list of types of uh, relations as shown in red on this slide. Of course, there is always uh, also the possibility of uh, choosing which types of headwords to show to the user when the user searches for, uh, uh, performs a search. But on the other hand, uh, we cannot expect that the user knows what we mean by a collocation. 
because if we have a lengthy discussion among lexicographers, whether red wine is a collocation or a headword, then this shows that even for the lexicographers themselves, it's not clear. And we cannot expect that the, that the user, the, the normal reader of the dictionary will know in advance or, or will arrive when thinking will arrive at the same conclusion where we arrived as, as a result of this uh, discussion that we have. Therefore, it is also, uh, we uh, consider it is uh, also useful for uh, the user that the user doesn't have to know what to search for, wh where to search for red wine in, among normal headwords or among collocations. And, uh, and so uh, the, the user simply searches in, in one search box and, and will find uh, any type of uh, word, uh, be it uh, including spaces or not including spaces. And uh, we can then choose how and what to show uh, to the user about each type of, uh, of headword. It, it may be that some of them will only contain relations uh, to, uh, to the respective co uh, components or, or bases or collocates. So our, our current understanding is that we are simplifying the data model. We uh, want to have fewer specialized data structures and use uh, type more as a parent parameter. So uh, many of our uh, data entities already have type as a parameter. Uh, uh, so it moves uh, closer to the ideology of the key value store. Uh, key value store is, is uh, the extreme of, uh, of not having specialized data structures. We are far from being there yet, and uh, I doubt if we ever get there, uh, we will still have specialized data structures, but we are moving towards having fewer of them. Uh, why we are doing this, why we are doing this is uh, to have less repetition in the data model, uh, to, to allow one particular unit to, to belong to more than one category, either simultaneously or uh, move from one to the other. Uh, so this particular, uh, this one uh, data item, not uh, two data items of the same form. And it's also easy to add or change categories. If we don't have to change the data model for, for adding a new uh, multi-word expression type, then it's, it's easier to, to add one. And the only drawback that, drawback that we can think of is that uh, there will be slight overhead in the selection of parameters. Uh, for instance, if collocations uh, require some particular parameter that is not used for other types of multi-word expressions, then uh, these other types will, uh, will seem to simply not use that parameter. But that's not a big problem as far as uh, we can see at this time. So thank you very much for listening and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you.